Hey guys, welcome back. It's a new episode of the Movie Minute. It's the uh, it's it's our own little water cooler on, on our side of the internet uh, where we get to talk about what's coming up with movies. And of course, I am the Luddite that doesn't get out of the house very much. Here I am in the basement doing a podcast. So the man about the world that does go out and checks out, gets in the theaters and does all that and tells me what I should leave the house for. Malengo, how are you doing today? Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, yes, I am probably on the opposite spectrum of things. I'm the guy that probably watches way too many movies. Yes. I should probably be doing something <laughs> quite more productive with my time. But that's okay. I enjoy it. It is my, uh, my relaxation. My time of zen. Excellent. All right, let's jump, Go let's jump right into it. Yeah, th- let me know. What, what are we looking at this week? All right, so this week, the big one came out, Gravity. Uh, this was an. I I actually saw this movie not not the Thursday at ten a or ten p.m. release. I waited till after work on Friday, and went in with both the people. I will say my my theater was not packed, but this movie has been getting high praise from, let's say every everywhere. There are a few people out there which I just think are weird that would say something like, oh, I didn't quite like it. Santa Bullock was a little weak. <laughs> but I got to tell you, this is a movie that I would definitely go see. Uh, starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, uh, I, I thought they both played uh, their roles extremely well. Um, characters were very, uh, very easy to relate to. Um, if you could just imagine yourself in their shoes and how they would really uh there were there were some people that were complaining that george clooney was a little bit too much of a ladies man um but i mean i that didn't really do anything for me i i I thought that was fine um both ratings on metacritic and rotten tomato were very similar giving it about a 96 97 um those are the critic ratings i know that uh I mean, the audience ratings didn't fall that far back. Uh, the audience gave it a 90. So what I like to do with my like movie draft, which is something I'll talk about at another point, I like to combine those scores to get an average of what you know people are generally thinking. And I would say this is a movie that definitely go see. I actually, uh, actually want to go back and see it. I did not see it in 3D. Mm-hmm. And I, I heard that they did a very good job of demonstrating and, and getting the sense of space with 3d so i am one of those people that like to shy away from dishing out 17 dollars on one <laughs> movie ticket but uh this might be one that i might go back and maybe not see it on imax but just regular 3d just to try and get a bit of that experience um but yeah i i recommend it box office opening I mean, they they blew it out the park. So 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 from the trailer, the very very intense trailer, really, uh, it, yeah. it really felt like 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 is most of this movie like is it a, a very? Um, it feels like this is going to be like the one where the guy was stuck in the chasm, where you're kind of with him the whole time, right? Um, which I didn't see it. I presume that's how that movie goes. That's why it was represented in the trailer. Uh, are you really just kind of following her in her own kind of uh, neurosis, being you know? precisely lost in space or is there a lot more to it than you know kind of what we would perceive from the trailer well we're not really following her in the sense of a lost in space i think um i think the previews definitely did a good job of not giving away everything we get the sense that something happens up there that definitely goes wrong which gives the sense of maybe a loss in space. Mm -hmm. But I'll I'll credit that to um, the people that did the previews. They did a good job and not giving away like a lot of detail. Uh, It's, it's definitely a very compelling story. There's a little bit of like mushy stuff in there, but I mean, it all plays to character development. And I think all around it was, you know, a well-written story. um, Great, you know, great film filming, uh, cinematically, it, it was beautiful, beautifully done. And I mean, the CG, me coming from a CG background, I was very impressed. And even some of the details on how they did this movie. Yeah, maybe I'm getting a little too mushy. So, you know, I'll step back. I'll say, just go see the movie. All right. And, and maybe bring a date. And maybe bring a date. Is it a date movie? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd bring a date. Um, for people that were afraid of motion sickness, I will say that it lasts maybe all of a couple minutes. There's there's only one part where it's it could be a little perceived as a little motiony, but uh, even with that, I think they did a good job of like stabilizing your focus on the main character. So I think you know, I think you could pass that. It's a really good movie. Um, just one more note about this movie. Um, Alfonso Curran, uh, I'm going to butcher his last name, but to get a sense of like how good this movie was, uh, the guy that did Children of Men, which is an awesome, oh. awesome movie yeah, if you is. have not seen it. And uh, he, also, he also directed Harry Potter, The Prisoner of Azkaban. So to give you a sense... You're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's also move on. I saw Cloudy 2. Uh, I don't really know what compelled me to see this. <laughs> yeah, you, you were but, sitting here saying how, how you thought this was going to be a horrible movie. You thought I was crazy for liking the first one. I got a kick out of the first one. It was a blast. I liked, I liked, I did like the first one, um, and but the way the first one ended... I kind of felt like I don't see why they're making a second one. I know why every animation is compelled to make a second and third and possibly fourth straight to DVD movie. Children love these kind of movies. But I will say the good thing about this movie is it was also tailored. There are a lot of adult jokes in the movie. And uh, I thought that played out pretty well in the sense that that was entertaining, not entertaining enough to pay full price. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> not like... even not even entertaining enough to see it as a matinee. Um, you you really have to be bored. Well, well, this is one of those. I mean, I, I mean, you got to think about the marketing for these kinds of movies. There's those jokes for us, but typically, is this a movie for us, or this is a movie that you're going to take your kid to, and you're not going to completely want to, you know, strangle yourself for for watching it with them. Right. I, I really yeah. think that those are more sprinkled, not so much for us to go buy the DVD on our own, um, but it's to survive the experience, maybe more or yeah. less. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'd say like if you take a, an animation like Wreck-It Ralph or I mean, let's be honest, almost 90 percent of the Pixar movies, or I'd say 80 percent of the Pixar movies. Mm -hmm. But a movie like Wreck-It Ralph, I would say was directed right towards our demographic. And that's a movie where you could take your kids and be pleasantly surprised. You know, that's a movie where you'd say, ah, these are some of the characters I grew up with and you could sit here and enjoy it. This, on the other hand, is a movie that your kids drag you to. And there are a couple of jokes sprinkled in there for parents and adults. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, unless you're really bored, which <laughs> I mean, there, there are a lot of good movies coming out in this stretch. So I would say this one, I would leave this one for like red box. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you really want to see it, if you, if you're like, Oh, I really want to know what's going on with cloudy with a chance of meatballs too. <laughs> that seems yeah. like somewhere to go with. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's, let's continue on this, on this. Also just a side note, if anybody cares, I like talking numbers, but um, yeah, also with the cloudy of the meatball, they it, they spent seventy eight million dollars to produce the movie. I understand it was uh you know it was a sequel, but they have not made that money back yet. <laughs> but they will. They will eventually. They you know. I mean, I, I know we talk numbers, but isn't it? I, I isn't it kind of like a weird game because they're gonna make they're gonna sell the DVDs. It's almost guaranteed at this point, especially being a kid. Yeah, movie like I mean, this. this isn't accounting for DVD sales. So yes, you're right. Once the DVD sales come out, there's a good chance that you know it might they might even out, if not creep a little bit above that. But I mean, if you're looking at totally numbers, um, I don't know that you're kind of like squeaking by there. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't foresee a cloudy with a chance of meatballs three. Anytime soon is what I'm saying. Then again, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, the last movie. Um, this is another one that I, I actually was excited to see this when I saw the previews. And then I was swayed by all of the reviews and everybody bashing on it. So I was like, all right, you know, 
DVD comes out, I'm going to check it out at a friend's house. And I am glad I did not spend money to go see this in the theater. Oh, yeah? <laughs> now this is? I, I It's sad. These movie, this movie starts out with so much potential. I'm not sure and, if you mentioned that we're talking about the Lone Ranger here. Lone Ranger. I am sorry. We are talking about the Lone <laughs> I'm not Ranger. sure if we mentioned. We might have. Uh, <laughs> this uh, is how distraught you are. Uh, this movie starts off with so much potential. Johnny Depp mm-hmm. and uh, er- Ernie Hammer. I think that's the. I don't even know what. I think he's it's like Ernie Hammer or, or something. I, I keep forgetting how it's how it's pronounced. Uh, but but basically the the the, the twins from uh, Social Network. Yes, uh, that's where he is. I kept picturing him, and I was like, "Where have I seen that guy?" Like I, you know, like I see these guys everywhere. Um, yes, and you know what's funny? He actually, he kind of. Now that I'm thinking about it, he kind of plays that same character, <laughs> but uh, like the 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 yeah. twins. But yes, I don't know. Johnny Depp should never play an Indian. It's almost like they went through the wardrobe of. Um, of the crazy pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. And they were kind of like, yeah. And they were kind of just like, well, we haven't used this. So why don't we just use this costume? And we'll (laughs) throw a crow on the top of your head. It does look like, I mean, doesn't it kind of remind you of, uh, was the second one where they found them on that Island with the Aborigines? Yeah. Yeah. Like they just took one of the Aborigine costumes, tossed it on me. And he's like, yeah, kind of do a sparrow, but you're like, yeah. What if Jack Sparrow was an American Indian? Yes, yes. How would you react? So, right? Or you got a perfect idea. We'll paint your face white, you know, we'll take off that coat, take off that hat. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I mean, I tell it's funny because I'm looking at the movies at the director, uh, Gore uh, Verbinski. He did Rango, which was an, was, was an amazing movie, but oh, that yeah. was also Johnny Depp. Uh, he did the third Pirates of the Caribbean, which I. Did not see because I said these are too many. Uh, but he's done Weatherman and the Ring. Wait, the so third, I, wait, wait, wait. The third one or the fourth one? Uh, I no. Wait, let me rephrase that. Sorry, he's done the first three. Oh, okay, okay. So that yes, I wrote that wrong. In that's my a notes. good pedigree, Sorry though, that. right? I mean, that's like that should be a no-brainer that this is going to be a good movie. That. <sighs> Well, you would hope it would be a good movie. It's almost like the budget, Disney was kind of like, your budget is just do something awesome. And I think he just went with that Pirates of the Caribbean, like massive, big, just, I don't know, it just plays off. Yeah, it's not good, guys. It's another one that has not made its money back. And it's another one that's been out for 13 weeks. And I don't think it will make its money. It cost this. This movie cost two hundred and fifteen million dollars to produce. It's only scraped in eighty nine million. So, yeah, I think this was considered a flop. Yeah. Um, if somebody really wanted to know my my rating, the way I describe my ratings, um, honestly, I, I saw it at a friend's house, so. <laughs> I would say wait for it to come in in the mail in Netflix. <laughs> You're saying you wish it was a Netflix. I wish I wish it was a surprise when I opened up my my red envelope and I say, oh, <laughs> I guess this is what I'm watching tonight. Ah, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean in the desert. No, no. <laughs> oh, this. <laughs> uh, but anyway, hey, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a good time for a break, right? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and of course, you know, I just want to, you know, if you're uh, uh, coming across uh, the movie minute here, uh, I'll let you know about everything else going on. Uh, we're part of a network here at Sorgatron Media, sorgatronmedia.com. Of course, we do this live every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Check out some other stuff, other geek stuff. If you're into video games, we got Let's Play from our friends over at insertcointobegin.com. Uh, we got the Wrestling Mayhem Show from wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And, of course, the awesome cast where we talk uh, geeky uh, uh, iPhones and, 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 and social media and technology. Uh, so I just want to uh, throw out, and, of course, we, we have a lot of other productions we're doing over there, some DVD stuff, some documentaries. Uh, great if you're from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, we do a great nonprofit news show called Unsung. We're just posting actually today 
had just posted before running down here to set up um, the latest with the day of giving. Uh, so if you want to check out some of the community stuff like that or see what we're doing in this community. Uh, so check out all that stuff and sign up for the mailing list. Uh, we now have two mailing lists, one for uh, people that you guys like to consume shows like this and the DVDs and everything that we do here. Um, and we're starting a new creators. Now, Malango, you're a creator. I'm a creator. You're a creator, and you like to yep. learn. You like to learn about like production and social media. You're at PodCamp Pittsburgh this past weekend. Yes, I was. Uh, so, uh, so sign up for that. We're going to start putting together a little bit of information about what we're doing, what we're learning from. You know how far we've come with. Uh, putting up, to, putting together shows like this. Of course, this one just getting off the ground or anything else like that. So go over sorgatronmedia.com and check all that out. Malengo, what are we talking about next? Hey, I think we should talk about some movie news. Okay. Well, actually, we'll change it up because it's not really movie news. I think the only big movie news that I really wanted to talk about was uh, the Iron Man experience. Okay, what's this? Uh, yeah, it's, it's coming to Hong Kong. <laughs> so I think uh, I think this is awesome. I think it's awesome in the sense of a corporate entity taking full advantage of the assets that are at on hand. And what I mean by that is Disney buying Marvel. So now we get to see Marvel across the world. But yeah, coming in uh, 2016, so uh, the Iron Man experience. They show some concept art here of what it might. be. <laughs> potentially be and um i don't i don't know i kind of how is that gonna what? work <laughs> <laughs> oh wait 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 wait. okay i see what this is this is one of those uh uh not alternate reality uh what do you call those yeah i mean i've seen one of these at the mall right where you're in this big thing that you're mm -hmm. all lined up in this big car thing i mean kind of like the back to the future where it's like moving like physically, yeah. there's a big screen. Or, or it could be like the, uh, what is it, the 4D where they're yeah. splashing you with water. You probably have 3D glasses and all that. Because if you look at this this artwork here, you see a little bit of a like a car back here. Yep. There you go. Yeah, you get strapped into a vehicle. Yeah. Yep. That, that's what it's going to be. I mean, but, but you, aren't you excited for this, though? Because, I mean, okay, great. You know, Disney got these these resources now they have somebody big like iron man so mm -hmm. presumably spider-man and all those guys we got star wars is now going to become a part of it you know like the kind of rides they've done with their properties in the past you know uh all the way back to the captain eo, EO days right mm -hmm. um yeah. so i mean just imagine like those people the imagineers if you will uh now applying that to these properties that's amazing that's a great idea i i, I can't wait to see what what comes of it and it may give me more reasons to want to go to disney world finally yeah but that's disney world in hong kong well yeah this is the first one but i think there's a little <laughs> bit of a, a deal thing where they have to wait out with universal studios here in the states um because they remember they they were the marvel thing for the longest time right yeah i mean i i'll be interested to see this i don't i just think it's i think it's funny but at the same time you know it's a little exciting to see like these are characters that we grew up with as kids, yeah. and I don't know. Maybe the experience will be entertaining. You know, we were we were talking earlier in the in the pre-show about the Star Wars and how like they're throwing out commercials now targeted towards the parents. That was quick. Trying trying to bring us in, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'd love to like you know be a fly on the wall and see like the actual statistics if if these campaigns are working because what they're trying to do even with star Wars clone is bring in the younger demographic. And at the same time, trying to tailor to us oldies who grew up with it. And even the generation before us mm -hmm. to say, Hey, come back. You know, we're still relevant. We still have all the things you grew up with. Here's a reason to bring the whole family along. And mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just interesting to see if that works. Uh, Mad Mike's in the chat room and he's saying they could turn the Soren in Epcot into the Iron Man ride so easily. Mm. There you go. Maybe you just see a lot of conversions like that, right? Yeah, it's quite possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, hey, let's let's move on, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right. So. I apologize, Internet. These next few topics are not about news, but I'm still interested in them. So okay. <laughs> we're going to talk yeah. about them. <laughs> so uh, uh, Sunday TV ratings came out for Family Guy and Bob's Burgers. 
And uh, the tagline said that uh, the ratings for both of these shows dip. And so part of me, it's kind of a mini rant, but after looking at the ratings, it brought up a question, two questions. The first one was like, yes, these shows are going up against primetime football. So, of course, the ratings will dip. Mm -hmm. But how long have we had shows like uh, The Simpsons that have been on air? I don't even know if anybody still watches The Simpsons. 25, and even like 25 seasons. Yeah, and Futurama, which just ended, and the long-standing joke about that is, oh, we're canceled, but then we get renewed, and we get canceled. So a show like Bob's Burger, which I think had a phenomenal first and second season, they're going into their third season, and on a on an opening on an opening week, or this is the third week, I think, second or third week, they're pulling in ratings of a one point nine. So and. I mean, I've never been into American Dad, and Family Guy is hilarious, but I can watch the reruns on just about every channel out there. And I think that's part of the problem, too, because I think there is an oversaturation with especially Family Guy and The Simpsons. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, because, I mean, how many times, I think in just about any market, you turn on uh, your television flip through between the hours of, say, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock, at least Eastern time. I don't know what the equivalent is in other time zones. Yeah. Uh, and, or even after 11, 11.30, or even after 10 o'clock sometimes on some of these, you will find. It's like the old joke, Law and Order. Law and Order is on somewhere in the world if you flip through your channels. You know, true. Uh, yeah. like some version of it is rerun somewhere. Uh, I, I, and I imagine that's still true. And now it's becoming true with NCIS uh, and Simpsons and Family Guy are the same exact way. Uh, I, and I, I think we're getting to this point where maybe people aren't looking for the new ones. They're fine with the old ones or they're just experiencing the old ones. Um, yeah. Plus, I mean, I'm seeing the fatigue. Like, I know I know my wife, like, I, I've turned on Family Guy, and she's less and less interested in checking it out, whether she's burnt out with it, or maybe she doesn't like the jokes anymore, because it does seem like, a lot of times it does feel like they have to stretch so far, since they've done so much for so long. Simpsons has been burnt out on this for, you know, 10 years, it feels like. Exactly. I mean, I was even talking to a co uh, coworker and talking about the Treehouse of Horror, mm -hmm. and the guy, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm not even that interested." And that that used to be a staple of The Simpsons. It was. It was. So I mean, I mean like when is. you have a demographic of 18 to 49 year olds, and you you have a rating that's only coming at 2.9, mm -hmm. that's a very small demographic of people that are are putting time aside to watch. But you know, I don't think it matters anymore because they're just plugging in ish, uh, uh, episodes because they know that they're going to get the syndication deals you know it, it, this is all just part of the machine you know we kind of so that begs to that then begs in my question is is this hurting like animation and shows like this for future well, bob's burger is a really good cartoon yeah but i don't know that i like that's the problem it's like if i'm a if i'm a cartoon studio you know that's trying to get on prime time the only place out there is, I mean, not cable, so primetime networks. I got to go to Fox. Nobody else is doing it. So my lineup's getting stuck in between Family Guy, American Dad, mm -hmm. and The Simpsons. And you're sitting there thinking, like, who's going to sit around on a Sunday night, especially if football's on? Or, I mean, I, I watch football. So I'm one of those the sports people. But, you know, I have to assume that for the people that were watching these based on these ratings, it begs to differ how long is Fox willing to sustain this? Unless it is, like you said, just for the machine and all they care about is a subscription deal that they could uh, rake in when all this is done with. But I don't know. Yeah, uh, Mad Mike's in there. He said he still watches The Simpsons and uh, he has no fears they'll have, uh, they'll have stories for years. So For The Simpsons? Yeah, so I mean, I guess he's, he says... He thinks they're doing fine, you know. So, I wish, you know, I don't think and I've been going back. I haven't watched regularly for a couple seasons, and they actually just added it because it used to be it wasn't on Hulu Plus. You had to go to the web; it wasn't included in the subscription. Uh, but yeah. this season started getting included, so I'm starting to watch it again. And it's like, okay, you know, that it's I I don't expect the magic of the monorail episode anymore, right? But yeah. I like to see Simpsons. I like to see what they're coming on. I like to see that they're still there lampooning things that are going on on television and in society today in their way, 
you know um they have their formula and that's what you come back for is south park really much different than it was 10 years ago is it really so groundbreaking these days no yes. but, but people go to it just like i i think it's becoming a point where just like i go to my 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 uh my my conan o'brien's and my and my daily shows and stuff that that are more commentary i think i go to mm-hmm. the simpsons and the south parks and the family guys because like well that's the brand of commentary i want to see that's the brand of humor i want to see and it's great that i'm still getting it you know um i, I at least i think that's the interpretation i think that's why these guys aren't going to go away you're going to have how many people are just you run into are just nuts about the simpsons and if they could they could yeah. get every season on dvd just because you know I, I i don't i think they're fine for that they are it just got renewed for a 26th season it's crazy yeah, i know right but great you know i love that they're able to do this well yeah i mean it, it'll be interesting i know even with like the uh what there was a there's a company oh uh, there was what I read was uh, Breaking Bad. One of the advantages Breaking Bad had, they didn't even think they would make it to five seasons. Um, and it, they give a lot of the credit to Netflix. Mm-hmm. The fact that, you know, that people were able to catch up and people were able to regain interest. So, I mean, it, when you think about it, maybe Fox, with The Simpsons at least, they know what they're doing. Where they might just say, like, hey, you know what, pay... You know the one ninety nine or whatever. Yeah. And uh, this is an interesting take, also from the chat room with Mike here. Uh, he says uh, the Simpsons tapped out has actually helped uh, with the show because they are able to tell different stories through the context uh, on there. And I know, I know, a few people have been fairly addicted in buying donuts uh, on there. Um, and, mm-hmm. and it's nice to see there's a video game experience, a digital experience yeah. that doesn't stink. You know, although Hit and Run was kind of fun. Um, so, or what, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one that was the GTA knockoff, right? That was actually kind of a little bit fun. So, um, but I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't think because they would have to drop off a lot in consistency, consistent, consistently, for them not to get renewed on Fox's choice for both yeah. Family Guy and, and Simpsons, uh, because Fox wants to be the people known for being their home because they know everything else merchandising and they may get a piece of it too. Um, so that might, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think that makes sense. And yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. No, um, for the other guys, I mean, it, it's so hard to get in there anyways. And well, I know, I know Bob's burgers has definitely gone to, uh, stuff like Hulu for, yeah. but even then they, I think they're on a one week delay Yeah, and I don't know that that necessarily helps them. And I never got into American Dad, but that's just a, well, I, I mean, believe like that's a spinoff of it's, the whole. It's a Family Guy spinoff. And so yeah. The Cleveland Show. What happened to the Cleveland Show too? That um, got canned. And 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 Bob's Burgers. Uh, I'm sure there's some connection somewhere, considering the people involved in it, uh, between them and like some of the other animation productions. So it's I mean, not there like, might be. There was a spoof that. Uh, that Archer did. Mm-hmm. And if you if you have not seen this, you you have to see. I believe it was the beginning of, of season four. I want to say, but it's an awesome spoof to Bob's Burgers. It's yeah. hilarious. Uh, yeah, it, it, like it feels like they're all friends at some point. So it's not like it's not like some you know. There's a lot of room to rise up and fill a spot there as an animation show. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's so saturated. There's so many places to go. And it is who you know. You know, Family Guy could have just as easily ended up on, you know, FX than Fox, you know, yeah. these days. You know, so it's, I'm not worried about what that does for animation for primetime. Great that there's some happening. And I think they'll be, they'll be there for a good bit, you know. Cool. So the other story I wanted to talk to, uh, you know, talk about were, I guess Rotten Tomato decided that they were going to start rating, which is kind of funny because of Nielsen's ratings. Uh, they're going to start rating some of the upcoming shows that premiered this fall. Okay. And so I was looking through the list, and uh, some of them I've actually seen the premieres of. Others I could care less. But I thought the big one that stood out was uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This was a this was a television show, clearly from the Avengers Oof. spinoff. Yes, I thought they uh, they explained um, the agent that died. What well, might help me out, Mr. Coulson? 
boom, yeah. They explained his uh, his revival in an interesting way that I thought was appropriate based on the movie. That was my biggest you, thing is how are they going to translate read, that? Do you read Marvel Comics? Yeah, I know. I mean, everybody, it, like, everybody watching dies this show. Back. Well, there's that. But but they, there's so much subtext that happens in this thing. Like, y- y- watching this show, did you feel like you were reading a storyline out of a Marvel comic? That's, no. No? I didn't, though. You did? I did not. The, watching the premiere did not feel like... To be honest, watching the premiere, I don't know if anybody's seen Alphas. Okay. Um, but it felt like a mesh of the television show. I think it's on TNT or ABC... Or, uh, or TBS, or it could be FX. I am sorry if I'm butchering where the show is called. I think Alphas, Alphas, Alphas was Alphas. on Sci-Fi, I think. Yeah, Alphas, it, it seems like a mashup of Alphas and Heroes. Okay. And I, that's what I got. And I don't know, does. maybe that's what they're going for. Well, well a little bit. Um, I, I like that it, it, it's definitely firmly planted in the same world as the as, as the movie, so at least has that feel. But the way that they kind of subtext, like, because there's that, uh, yeah, yeah, Coulson went to Tahiti after that thing, and he's all right, you know. And then there's yeah. like, yeah, if only he really knew, you know, like that, yeah. little, like that, that little dropped comment there was like, huh. It's like, and you will find that out in the next big crossover event, right? Uh, so, but still, like, like I feel like it preserved the Marvel feel, the Marvel storytelling uh, in a TV budget kind of area, um, yeah. and kept the feel like this still feels at least as well produced as the Agent Carter short, the old Coulson shorts. You know, uh, yeah. you could put those on a DVD with uh, what I'm seeing so far of the Agents of Shield. Uh, and you feel like this was just a mini a mini webisode that connects directly to this. Well, I will say that um, just as a note, because uh, this definitely is a this is a beta which uh, Rotten Tomatoes is putting together. Yeah. So they there aren't as of right now um, not seeing any fan interaction with this beta, meaning it's it's probably just a list of critics. Um, and as I'm looking at this, the reviews counted were roughly 40 reviews from critics. So, I mean, it's not a, it's not a large number compared to what they usually do, but an 87% is, I think, pretty good. That's mm-hmm. pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty, so, uh, pretty damn good, yeah. Yeah, but like I said, the reason why I don't know, I mean, this is all, I will preface this by saying this is my opinion. I don't know that I totally agree with all of these ratings and uh, you know, everybody's everybody has their own opinions to stuff, but like when I see stuff like the Mindy project season two, getting an 88%, I kind of question who's watching that show. <laughs> uh, new girls, they're giving season three, a 100%. I like new girls, but I mean, that's almost too perfect. I believe there's, only one, to- I believe there's only one new girl in that show. Yeah, there's there's only one new girl. Maybe you're convincing that with two broke girls. Two bro, uh, yes. <laughs> haven't That's a even. Bad show too. Haven't even. I, you know, I've been dipping a little bit through uh, because just I pull up the Hulu while I'm working, and and you know, I, I see the screen on the Roku, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, Michael J. Fox show. Let's give it a shot. It's like, not half bad. I'm not going to seek it out every week, but I don't think I want to mind. You know, throwing it on like in the background, right? Same with I, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, dads. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Not I, I, not the best. No. I think it has potential. Um, they were reaching. That show was reaching. They're reaching in that Big Bang Theory territory right there. They're like, uh, oh, we work at a video game company, and which is like that doesn't look like any kind of video game company. And, exactly. And, and what's with the token Asian girl? Other than okay, I mean, other than and then I think in the first episode exactly why they have a token Asian girl. Yes, um, to get the big deals with Nintendo. In Japan. Yeah, exactly. There and you put go. Her in, <laughs> and put her in the Sailor Moon uh, outfit, you know. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's their whole season right there. Hey, Even the dad jokes. Hey, there's the dad penis. jokes weren't good. There's there's dad I, jokes and penis well, jokes. It's all good. Yeah, but like I said, <laughs> it's everyone's opinion. Like yeah. the same way that. I like persons of interest. I'm sure other people will not. I haven't had a chance to watch Castle yet, and that was a show it's I really like. Me neither. I, I think, it's on the, the the list of like the one that everybody talks about. That I'm like just 
have not had the time to dedicate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I was dreading the fall return yeah. for the fall season, but it's just to t- television now. It's just too hmm. too congested. I'm just on too much stuff. I'm on Netflix catch up right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I just slammed through. Oh, what was the series I just finished off? The League. Uh, just started mm-hmm. into Walking Dead last season, and I have How How I Met Your Mother on deck here, uh, and Comic Book Men. So I mean, I'm mm-hmm. going through that whole catch up. Um, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, bulge thing. Yeah, I mean, television is. Yeah. Yes, but this will be interesting. I'll keep an eye on this and see, like. If they actually get more fan interaction, because that that would be interesting. They, I mean, they get a large amount of hits to their site, mm-hmm. so it'd be interesting to see how something like this would eventually compare to something like a Nelson report or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, let's let's go on to what's going on this this week in movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's coming out this weekend? So uh, I actually got to see uh, Captain Phillips. You did on uh, yes on an advanced screening. Okay. Um, I think the previews definitely have a. They might make people feel. Well, I mean, you definitely know what's going on. This you know this boat is getting taken over by hostages, but I will give this movie. I think this is one that people should go see. Um. It has a, a very cool ending, which kind of made me feel like America, you know, like F yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think for that, I think there are a lot of people that will enjoy that aspect of it. A uh, very messed up situation that ironically is interesting. That's what. That's all I'm gonna say. Ironically, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin anything. Okay. But uh, Tom Tom Hanks does a good job, I think, in portraying this person's character. It's based off a true story, uh, which I think is crazy. Um, and if you're a fan of the unit, uh, Max Martini is in it, who is a freaking awesome character. Uh, but yes, I, I have a a long-standing joke that all of the characters from the unit, besides the uh, the black general who I can't remember his name, but he, he's in all the, um, the safe auto. Is it safe auto? He's in all the car commercials. Oh, um, uh, Prudential. I think it is. Yeah. Prudential. But all of these characters besides him, they all continue to play military roles. So it's awesome. It's like, yes, we're not on the unit anymore, but we still do our job. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here so, protecting you. But, uh, but yes, I think people will be pleasantly surprised about this. Um, I'm kind of like on the fence of whether or not I would pay full price for it, but I would see it. So I guess it depends on your budget or what you're feeling like, you know. Uh, and then Machete Kills also comes out this weekend. This is one that I will not be seeing unless somebody pays me to go see it. Really? Are you not a fan? <laughs> Are you not a Grindhouse fan? I'm a deal? fan of the Grindhouse experience, uh-huh. and that's about as far as I go. These kind of movies are the kind that I kind of wait for Netflix. Um, and this has a killer cast. It's almost disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but these are all the same people that were in the last one. So I don't know. They must just they must just enjoy doing this stuff. That's what I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is definitely a fun experience for these guys. It's got to be. To make something absolutely ridiculous for the, like this. Um, I, I mean, it was with Char- I love the introducing Charles, Charlie Sheen, which I think they called him something else. Um, yeah. I mean, this is just completely over the top. Um, I, I, but it, it's, it's such a it's such a send up to like all those old movies that, you know, if you flip through Netflix and see these just horrible horrible straight to video movies uh yeah and 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 this movie like is a a larger budget representation of all of that is that wait wait is that is that mel brooks i saw not mel brooks uh sorry um yeah yeah it, it, it's uh I, I can, the, i'm blanking right now um oh. the lethal weapon guy uh but it, it's it's 
yeah, I think everybody has fun with something like this. How could you not watch in something like this? Yeah, let, let's just run down the list. All right, Lady Gaga's in this. I don't understand <laughs> oh. that one, but whatever. You got uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., who was a great A-lister got, who's now turned to, the, I don't, the Czech whatever. The Modern Family in this thing. Yes, the, the Sofia, uh, Sofia Velguerera from uh, The Family or whatever. Or whatever that, yeah, fa- uh, modern family, modern family. She's in this. Uh, it's just Antonio Banderas. Oh, Gibson. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, it's almost like they pulled people that just wanted to have fun, and then people that were having a sh- like no luck in their careers, <laughs> and they're like, let's just do this movie, guys. Like Jessica Alba, she must have been bored. She must have like literally checked her schedule. She was like, I'll take this for $2 million. Isn't like the last thing I've seen her in was like a Nintendo DS commercial? No, an I, no, a Windows phone commercial, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. But the thing was, like, I didn't think she was seeking out movies because of her kids. Yeah. So, whatever. Whatever. But, I mean, this is this could be one of those things. Like, again, Jessica Alba is somebody that's been a lot of uh, Rodriguez's movies, you know, including, like, Sin City, you know. Uh, so, yeah. I think this is the Hollywood buddies all... You know, this is the this is the friend right. pal. You know, just like Kevin Smith gets all of his buddies in a movie, uh, yeah. Rodriguez gets all of his buddies in the movie. You know, I mean, this is this is the fun project. You know, that's very possible. Um, and I, I love like the I love the movies where you see uh, the critics are just like throwing up all over the place. They're like, this was a twenty seven. <laughs> It's like, don't even see this. And then you see, like, the but, audience. But the audience, reason it's a 27. 90% of the people out there want to see this. But the reason it's a 27 is the reason you want to see it so bad. <laughs> right? Uh, like, I'm sorry. I did not expect think, Jay and Silent Bob to be an amazing, epic movie. But I expected it to be the movie for me who watched all of the previous uh, movies with Jay and Silent Bob in it. Okay. I, I mean, this is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull my movie snob card and uh, say, "No, no, we we no, no, no." What is that? <laughs> That's my French movie snobness. All right, all right. There you go. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I will say, I think this would be a perfect opportunity for you to go see a movie. And then you give us your review, Mike. We'll see what I can do here. That comes out this weekend, right? This weekend. We'll see. We'll see if we can uh, we can shore up some time there with the Steelers game and all that. So, uh, excellent. Is that all we got for today, then, sir? That is all I have for today. Awesome. Now, if people want to talk. You're the movie guy. If they want to talk movie movies guy. with you, they want to talk. Uh, well, then we'll get to how they can talk to me about how Machete's awesome. Uh, but they want to talk about movies with you, sir. Where are they going to find you? Check me out on Twitter at Rambling Mango. Uh, and yep, I will. I will try and hit back. I've been posting a lot about movie trailers and uh, random news that I see and cool stuff like the Lego poster for Thor. Uh, but yeah, anything that we don't talk about, definitely hit me up there if you have questions. I will. Uh, Try to respond as soon as possible. Awesome. And, of course, we are here live every Tuesday night at 5.30 p.m. Ready to talk movies uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Also, go over to JustinTV slash Sorgatron Media. We got a 24-hour uh, round going on uh, uh, 24-7. Uh, we're, we're trying to keep it up here uh, so you guys can just dip in at what we're doing and what we're talking about all the time if you like uh, these kinds of conversations. Uh, so you just... Pop in anytime. Um, so, hey, and go to sorgatronmedia.com for this and past episodes so you can see what we've been doing. And uh, let us know. Hey, and hit up Malengo at, at Rambling Man- Mango or hit me up at Sorgatron. Uh, and uh, tell us what movies you think that you've been watching, uh, what you're excited about, what's coming up. Um, we need an email. We need a show email, don't we? Uh, we, we do. Need, we need to work on that. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll try to get that up. But in the meantime, hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up even on the Sorgatron Media, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Uh, and Twitters and everything as well, and we'll direct that to this podcast. Hashtag Movie Minute uh, for any commentary, so we can follow those as well. And uh, and and that's it. I'm Malango, uh, great talking with about movies this week. Maybe you'll get my butt out to a theater. If nothing else, we can at least talk Agents of Shield, right? Do it. All right. We'll see you guys next week.
Explosion!